We're black rebels Searching for freedom Trying to break these chains from my mind Trying to find the king that lies inside Chris Fullman, I got him on the podcast And um, I'm excited to do this one because And I've told you this before But I really feel like um, I, from the moment when we first met, when I walked in here to do the Freebird, uh, the Freebird song, you just have a, an aura and a vibe to you that is like, boss. I'm serious. And I, you know, I see this whole space and I just see a huge potential. And I kind of feel like it's almost like a microcosm of, um, of the city. It's like there's just so much unmet potential. So I guess my question, my first question is how... You're a baseball player, you know, kind of first. You're an athlete first. But how did you decide to open this facility? You know what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> and it's funny that uh, that you mentioned with me being a baseball player because that's pretty much the that's pretty much my model, mm -hmm. right? Like uh, probably since I was about 12 years old, I wanted to play professional baseball. Right. So. Um, I really probably around 18, 19 started getting access to things online where I was able to tap into, uh, you know, what professional athletes were doing, like what were they eating, okay. you know, how were they working out, what did their routines look like. Right. So when I got access to this, it's like, well, shoot, if I want to be where they are, then I need to do what they do. So you did this for you as an athlete initially? Mm hmm I had no idea. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you were how, wait, how old are you now? <laughs> 34. And when did you open this place? Uh, in 2012. Wow, I didn't know it's been here that long. I mean, I just moved back to Delaware maybe five or six years ago at this point, so I had no idea. Mm -hmm. But you built it trying to train yourself to be, is that right? And that's what I'm understanding? No, 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 so. Okay, so my that, bad. No, 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 so that was my, that was my framework. Um, so gotcha. that was, that was my framework, you know, doing any and everything that I can do, um, you know, to take, to go to the next level. Uh -huh. Um, so then when I was released from pro ball, I was like, well, you know, what do I do with this energy now? Mm -hmm. Right. And I said, you know, I came back home and I put my focus into, uh, kind of like consulting and management consulting and coaching. Um, <clears throat> And we linked up with a couple producers um, and their whole vision was, you know, we think that we can build, uh, you know, something here for musicians and, um, you know, it would really be good for the community and something that we really need in Wilmington. So we sure. looked into that um, and we built it, uh, you know, with me being an athlete, I always had a passion for um, for training young athletes. Uh, so at the time I was actually renting the PAL um, to do my sessions where I was working with baseball players, football players, basketball players, working on strength and conditioning and skills uh -huh. training. Um, but then I had the opportunity to expand our studio space into the warehouse. And that's when I started. Um, you mean the music studio space? The music studio yeah, space. Yeah, yes. Um, then I expanded into the warehouse where we were able to um, start training athletes. So now I kind of had everything in line um, with what I wanted to do, which was to help build and mold careers in art, sports, and entrepreneurship. So, you know, as a baseball player, it's obvious that you want to have a sports facility, you know what I'm saying, that makes sense. But when did you, like, you know, on one hand, there are a lot of people who've made a lot of music from, a lot of money from music, but nine times out of 10, like, music is a terrible business. I'm a musician, like, it's like, the last thing you think, if, you, if I want to make money, I'm going to go into music. Like, where did you, what made you want to go into the arts at all, especially as an athlete, you know what I'm saying? So, in addition to being an athlete, um, I also went to school and got my degree in business. Okay. So, you know, I always knew that I wanted to, um, you know, do something, do something for myself. So, um, what I saw in a lot of friends um, and local musicians was that they either lacked the knowledge, the process, um, or just even proper exposure. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I looked at some of my skill sets. Like I said, what I acquired from, you know, pursuing a professional baseball career is 
literally, um, you know, what does Alex Rodriguez's workout look like? Mm. Right. So what does that translate to as an artist? You know, how did J. Cole sell three million records? These are things that I did. I saw people weren't doing. Right. You know what I mean? So I saw this space where it's like, yeah, look, there's obviously a lot of money in entertainment. Right. Um, and then when you look at um, creating opportunities for urban areas, there's not really many industries that have provided as many opportunities for individuals as sports and entertainment. Right. We're just going to call it what it is. Right. You know what I mean? Um, Because I, I I mean, I know it when you say it, but I don't still actively, like, immediately see a sport as entertainment. But of course it is. It is. Right. Right. 100%. And and, and when you talk about some of the challenges that we're dealing with here in Wilmington, Mm -hmm. um, there's a huge opportunity there. And I've seen it. So, okay, one of the, and this is something that you had recently on Facebook, I think. You had reposted um, Travis Scott, an event that you did with Travis Scott. Is that who it was? Mm-hmm. Right. And, you know, you were saying that, you know, on one hand it was a success because you brought somebody who became very major, um, you know, to Wilmington and had an event. But I th- if, tell me if I'm wrong, but like, on the other hand, you kind of felt like it didn't get the support that it needed and it wasn't, it, like it almost didn't go down as being as huge of a deal as it should have been. Do you feel like that's a fair statement? So first of all, just to be clear, um, I did not put that event together. Okay. Um, we were in support of it. You know, we did okay. some of the video coverage, um, some of the planning. Um, okay. We worked with, worked with some of those phases of it, but um, that was actually put on uh, by, I think they was it Foxtail? Foxtail was the festival. Hmm. Oh, man. What scene? Was it what scene? I believe was the company. Um, but excuse me for that part. But mm-hmm. uh, n- nonetheless, a local, uh, local young man, Brandon Potter, okay. and his company uh-huh. uh, pulled that together. Okay. Um, pulled not only Travis Scott, but Machine Gun Kelly. Yeah. Um, you had another guy, uh, Chill Moody, who was really kind of growing in the Philly area. I think um, you even had some local acts that were able to perform on there. Um, and I just feel like, you know, that happened in 2014. And we haven't seen anything like it since. And why do you think that is? B- b- because of the backlash of it. What was the know? backlash from? I wasn't here at the time, so I don't remember. And if you don't want to go into it, we don't have to. But... I, I think it like okay. We were talking outside about the fact that this uh, that Sarak is is coming, and you know, I'm hoping like she's a top notch MC, and she's coming to Delaware to do her you know her album release. And my concern is that you know it's not going to ignite the fire that I feel like it should be like, yo, it should it should be like almost like, you know, when like Dave Matthews posts his next, his tickets for his tour, it's like, gone, you can't get tickets. And I don't understand why the same thing necessarily, why the same expectation isn't there for events at that level that happen here. Does that make sense? Yeah, so one of the, one of the main, one of the main issues with that is just communication. Mm, okay. Like it, it's, it's communication. Like how do, where, where do we go to find that out? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? How do we know? Yep. You know, I saw the post for the event. Um, I wasn't familiar with her. Mm-hmm. Um, once I saw who she was and I, I checked out the flyer, I went and checked out her, uh, her social medias and I said, okay, you know, this is, this is kind of a big deal. Yeah. She's um, legit. And mm-hmm. I'm familiar with the, with the coffee shop and I love what, I love what he's doing over there. You know what I mean? To mm-hmm. really build arts and culture. And I think it's going to be really dope. Um, exposure and consistency, right? Like, this is a one-off. You know, we haven't had, we don't have these all the time. I know you do shows frequently. Well, obviously, it's, it's kind of hard to measure, especially in the last, what, six months because of COVID. We, we don't really know what would have or could have, should have. Totally different ballgame. Um, but with that being said, um, you know, why don't we get these turnouts? I think they had a an event in the fall where, um, you know, they bought a pretty, pretty popping artist. I mean, guy had hundreds of thousands of followers, you know, songs getting, you know, everybody knows who he is. And I think they didn't even pack out the queen with that. Um, Case in point, that's a perfect, that's, that's kind of my point. And it's, I, I, I really don't understand 
what the problem is, and maybe it is what you're saying, communication, but... Well, you, I, have, you have communication, and then you also have... Um, I hate to say it like this, but there's this lack of support for local talent, mm -hmm. right? So that was one of the big things with the Foxtail was... Yeah, you know, we didn't. There wasn't even a large presence of local up and coming artists at the time, mm -hmm. um, and we had the studio. So you know, I was hearing what guys were saying, and um, you know, people wanted to perform. People felt like there wasn't enough outreach and opportunity. Um, and, and the reality of it was, is like this is the first time. This is right. the first time this has been done. Um, it, it is a great opportunity to bring a different type of music. Um, to Wilmington. I mean, we've seen the festivals that take place, yep. um, and, and it's for um, certain demographics. You know, your jazz festivals for certain demographics, sure. your ladybug festivals, and everything else that takes place mm -hmm. for certain demographics. And this was a young, vibrant, you know, urban and suburban that loved the hip hop culture crowd. Like, yeah. where, what other event have you seen since 2014 that has that? Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so, jumping back to that event, where I felt like things went wrong is, <clears throat> okay, logistically, things didn't go as they were supposed to or as certain people thought that they should have, um, right, wrong, or indifferent. Uh, there was an opportunity there, right. right? We saw a draw. We saw something happen where there was no incidents. Mm -hmm. um, for those who were there, for the most part, great feedback. Um, and as I was, so now for the next one, you know, how do we incorporate more local acts? How do we support our local acts to the point where they're ready to be on the stage with those level of acts and actually take advantage of that trajectory? And, and you know, that's kind of my point. Um, that's definitely part of my, you know, what I feel like I see. And I'm, I'm, I, I like to echo my sort of opinions off of you because I know that to a large degree, you are, you know, you're very aware of, of, of who's out doing what, you know, at least certainly in the hip hop scene. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing, but like, I just feel like there are, a, a, considering the size of Wilmington, there are just, there's a lot of artists who I feel would be, who are as quality as anybody. Not anybody necessarily, but like who who absolutely should be totally successful in the game. And I'm like, why? Even myself. Like, I know where my gaps are in terms of my grind and that kind of thing. But like, I, I don't understand why certain people aren't further ahead. And, you know, I could name a lot of names, but there are a lot of people. Like, I mean, shit. I, for instance, when when Low Cut Gino, when, when he dropped that, uh, that diss, uh, I was like, oh! And... It was, it was it was top 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 the the, the way the, the beat the way that he spit it it was absolutely like if, if he was a big name artist it would have just been a tidal wave of oh my god and I don't understand why his career hasn't like gone even you know why it didn't oh, immediately level up from there and I don't know him personally or whatever but like I was like yo this kid has skills like. On it, like Beanie Siegel, like that was, you know what I'm saying? Like it was that good. I don't know how you see it, but <laughs> that's how I saw it. You know, I think, um, and, and, and it's funny that you mentioned Jeno because he was one of the artists that we met, that I met early in opening the studio. Mm -hmm. um, and he was introduced to me. Uh, and they said, yo, you got to meet this guy Jeno now that you got the studio. And they were like, yo, I'm telling you, he, he, he's crazy. Like, he's the hood poet. Like, he's been telling the story since sixth grade. So when I'm like, okay, let me, you know, let me see, you know. And one day he ended up coming through. And I told him, you know, that I had heard about him. And um, he ended up, he was like, you know, you want to hear something? And I was like, yeah. And so, you know, he said, you know, give me a topic. Mm -hmm. And so for 10 minutes... I just was shooting him topics and he never stopped rapping. And I was like, wow, you know, that's talented. That's talented. So, you know, that's when, you know, you see, you see talents like that and you're like, well, wow, you know, how do we get these guys the exposure? How do we get them the support 
Um, you know, how do we build them the infrastructure so that they could um, afford or even position themselves to be able to take those jumps, right? So one thing that I've seen, um, you'll see a lot of different type of uh, development programs, you know, small business, whether it be through the city, whether it be through the county, whether it be at SBA, um, and I've participated in some, um, you know, for my businesses at one point, and then um, kind of just going along throughout the years just to see uh, what was being offered. And every everything that I've one every time that I've gone, I've seen one thing that was consistent is um, you either have slim to none as far as artists, mm -hmm. um, and then when you do have them, the uh, the information isn't necessarily given in a way where it's like, oh, I see how this relates to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You're talking products, you're talking services. Um, but if you look at the majority of our talent, you know, whether they graduated from high school, graduated from college, whatever their case is, there was no course that says this is how you monetize yourself as a creative individual. Sure. You know what I mean? Maybe now they're starting to come up with these type of certificate programs which show you those type of things. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't necessarily get that at any level of school. Mm -hmm. So you're not looking at yourself as a business. You're not looking at yourself as a, I know what my products are, I know what my services are. And so now when they're talking this product service talk, I understand how that pertains to me as an artist. Um, and some of these situations like, oh, well, you know, you complete this 12 week program and now you're eligible for, uh, you know, fifteen, thirty thousand dollars $30,000, whatever the case may be. Right. Um, and they're pretty much guaranteeing you these monies in some of these cases. Um, and a $15,000 budget is pretty, it, it's That's more, it's more than what a lot of, um, a lot of guys say, well, you know, if I just had this to get started, I, you know, I'd be able to do X, Y, and Z. So now you take that and you say, well, damn, you know, even even on a bad day, if you're getting one of those loans and you're getting, you know, 20 plus percent, mm -hmm. uh, it's I don't, you know, to get over 30 would be crazy. But if you look at it like this, that's a 70, 30 label deal, right? It's a 70, 30 label deal, which who gets the mm, no, it no, doesn't no, work. It doesn't. Like that. It doesn't. It doesn't that's what I'm like, like trying to make sure I'm not misspeaking, but that doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. <laughs> It doesn't happen, but that's the same thing is where it's like, you know, yeah, you know, you have access to this budget and you basically just owe, you know, that percentage on it, which is the same way exactly how it would work if you were signed to a label. So now you look at those business development programs and it's like, well, you know, if you guys, if, if it's not going to be targeted for artists, either incorporate them or create something separate. Right. Um, and that's kind of the space that I'm in now is like, you know, Looking at looking to uh, work with some of these organizations to say, you know, what does this look like for artists and creative professionals? Where it's like, okay, you come through this program, and one of the most important things is one that you have a plan. You know, the the un the thing the benefit that you have over businesses is you don't have as much logistics, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you're the sure. talent, you're the talent, you're the product. I mean, look at this. You know? <laughs> your, 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 process, your process is pretty simple. Mm -hmm. um, so now you're looking at at the end of this program process, I'm going to have access to, you know, $15,000, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so now throughout the course of these 12 weeks, I need to be figuring out how am I going to utilize that $15,000 to expand the brand and at the same time, recycle that revenue. So it's important to do things like build a team, yeah. um, you know, create a strategic plan, because if you do those two things, you've essentially replaced the label. And that's one of the biggest things that you don't get with the uh, with the independent wave or the freelance wave is like you never replace the infrastructure that created the revenue stream that allowed, um, you know, people to make what they make, whether it be videographers, photographers, filmmakers, artists, musicians, whatever the case is. You know what I mean? You sign the label, they're able to guarantee you because they have that consistency they have that network they have that web right so unless you create that web or at least create the system then you know you never really get to reach that same potential yeah I, I I totally agree and I feel like um you tell me again but I I feel like there's at least a potential that that becomes the new wave 
and slash potential revolution because I just feel, and, and you're starting to see now even like some of the big label acts talk about going independent, you know what I'm saying? And I just, like the girl we just talked about, uh, Ciroc, I feel like she is someone, like she's probably close to my age range, but who, if she keeps grinding and puts together the right kind of team that keeps pumping out publicity and, and, and that end of the grind that she could wake up one day and be a totally independent musician who owns all of her publishing and who makes more money than the average signed artist and has more control, blah, 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 blah. And there could be a whole stream of that, you know, if people are able to put those small teams together that just hustle. Am I, do you see that at all? I, I, I do see that, and you know, it's crazy. Uh, so there's two things. Uh, now I had a conversation with a Sony executive probably about five years back. He's like, what um, the fuck do I need? What, sorry, what do I need you for? Yeah. But go ahead, sorry. But, but and his whole thing was, you know, what a lot of these artists don't understand is that the team generates 80% of the revenue. So, you know, how important is that team is very important. Very. Um, I'll be honest, you know, you get something with hustle and you also get something with time. Right. Right. With time, you have relationships. So you look at an artist and, uh, you know, you say, say you got someone who's been doing it for a while. You know, how long did it take you to get to the point that you can make that crap? You know, most labels, I mean, their labels are looking at this like banks now. Right. These are short term investments. Yep. You know what I mean? They're not, they're not giving you the lifetime deal, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and, and, and this is something that you that we could probably make a connection on because we both went to college is, you know, college isn't for everybody. Sure. Right. Of course. Just like a label isn't for everybody. Sure. And, and the same reason why I would say college isn't for everybody, I would say that a label isn't for everybody. It depends on what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If you want to be worldwide touring on TV in every you need to be signed. I mean, let's Do you just, think you have to be signed to get to that level? You're, you're going to have to have some sort of deal. Why? Uh, access to networks or, or time, or, unless you had the budget. But, okay, so can't you envision, like, okay, like if you found, if you, you personally, if you found like the golden artist, almost like Customato finds, finds Tyson, you know what I'm saying? It's like, this is my guy. Like, don't you feel that you and maybe like, we'll say five other people who are on their stuff mm -hmm. can make those connections and get that guy to a high, high level if you make the right connections? So here's the thing. Okay. Um, are you familiar with the term make or buy decision? Uh, no. Mm -mm. So basically, a make or buy decision is something that a business looks at to say, uh, you know, is it more efficient, uh, cheaper, better for whatever reason for me to make this or buy it, right? So a classic example for me, um, you know, with my background being in business and being in consulting, mm -hmm. um, you know, I come across clients and, you know, one thing that they might need is a website. Sure. Or they might need a video done, right? So now I'm faced with the point of like, do I know the process to go through to learn how to create a website? Yeah, sure. And I could probably put something decent together for you, mm -hmm. right? Same with video. Mm -hmm. But when I look at the time, the effort, and then the overall outcome of the product, is it better for me to make that myself or outsource it to someone who does that? Sure. Right? It's the same thing when I look at it. Yeah, we got a team of five, and I feel like we're going to come to the point where we're going to end up making some make or buy decisions. Mm -hmm. Right? For the sake of time, for the sake of expense, for the sake of budget. Um, you know, if, if you're coming to the table with the budget to put your artists in these spaces, then you do that. But that's right. where the label comes in because mm -hmm. they're going to spend the money to put those artists in those spaces, mm -hmm. whether it be big festivals. And, you know, there's an artist, you know, that I've known and worked with for the last, 
nine years. Mm -hmm. um, and I've seen him go through several signing situations mm -hmm. um, from signing a management deal to signing a promotional deal to signing a distribution deal to signing a production deal. And um, how successful is that person right now? Man, it's crazy. I just got an update from him last week. Um, and we're going to speak it into existence that he's got a TV show that he's working on with, uh, you know, Tyler, the creator. And all of a sudden, you know, some you know what big, I mean? some big, uh, he, he's got some good stuff going on. So, okay. This is kind of a, I mean, listen, perfect example to be, and maybe not perfect because I honestly don't know enough about her, uh, story to really know how it got to where it is and, uh, how well she actually is doing financially, mm -hmm. Suhiana, <laughs> right? I mean, I, I'm not. I, I don't have anything to say. I'm not going to make any commentary on artistry, whatever you, however you want to judge what she does. But it's like she's gone from here to love and hip hop, which is however you cut it. It's like a, a, that is, you know, she's on a Cardi B video. Cardi B is as big as it gets, and she's right there next to her, and. You know, I don't know what the game plan, how exactly it happened. I'm like, oh, well, if, if she can do that with her skill set, then, <laughs> then there should be other artists with, who might have more of a skill set to get to an equal or if not bigger level. I don't know how I'm oversimplifying this, well, but I'm you, like, I'm like you got to identify the path. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, what, what, what is your path? Like, what is your path to... You know, uh, what is your path to exposure? You know, how do you how do you generate traction? How do you bring that in? And you know, shout out to uh, patients who I'm sure had a lot to do with uh, the Sukihana move. That's that's a Delaware Delaware connect on a, I love it. on a major industry project. I but, love it. Um, you know, why was she able to get that opportunity? Is because she put herself in a position where you know, patients didn't have to justify making that suggestion if that was the way how it played out, right? Mm -hmm, like, hey, mm -hmm. look, we should, you know, I can connect you with, and this is a be dope because she's got this, and it was boom, boom, boom. That's how you connect the dots, you know? Um, but she put herself in position. Uh, you know, I've seen artists do it different ways, but I think consistency is, is ultimately what pays off. It's like whatever your angle is going to yeah. be, you know, if you want to go through TV, then go through TV, but you gotta set your direction. How are you gonna go through TV? How are you trying to take a path through TV, but you've never done a monologue, right? Mm -hmm. You're not putting out any content consistently. And, and that's one of the things that I see, when I see that type of trajectory and that type of break, it's like, wow, there is huge opportunity out here. Mm -hmm. Huge mm -hmm. opportunity. And that's, that's actually one of the things that really inspires me to this space is like, hey, if, if we could really get things in order um, and get resources to support uh, non-traditional streams of revenue. So I'll give you a classic example. Um, there's a young woman from Newark, Delaware, actually out of, you know, we'll say from Newark, Delaware. Um, and she created a blog where she does music reviews. Sure. Right? And Within two years' time, max, she's got over 800,000 subscribers, you know, doing millions of views. Um, I'm talking about, you know, probably doing 80 million plus a year, right? Um, and when I went over, because I was working with her, with, uh, with her brother, who's an artist, mm. and... Visual? No, rapper. Okay, good. And uh, her mom was like, yeah, this is where she does it. And she goes downstairs and shows me the setup, and it's her right next to her bed. And she's like, yeah, she sets it up right here. And then I look, and I'm like, wow. So the conversation I'm having with her mom, the conversation I'm having with her mom is like, you know, I, she's like, I'm just so frustrated because she went to college. You know, she was in medical school, and, you know, now she's doing this, and I just don't know. And I'm like, Mom, relax. Like this she's, is fantastic. She's okay. Yeah. And I, like, I was like, I don't know if she she might not be telling you 
exactly what she's generating from this right oh, now. Okay. But it's a situation where because like you're traditional, um, and they're 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 not American. Not that that has anything to do with it, but you know, um, the mindset is structure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Structure. Follow the process. Right. You know what I mean? You went yeah, absolutely. School, went to college. Now you're going to do the medical school thing. And it's like, wait a minute. What do you mean you're mm-hmm. going to do videos? Mm-hmm. And you're going to just talk about songs. What do you mean? Yep. You know? And when I say non-traditional, it's like being accepting to that. Yep. Right? Like understanding that that's a pathway to making 10000 plus a month. Dollars. Now you tell me what doctor, lawyer, and I'm not trying to shade nobody's of course. nobody's angle, but yeah. it's like the it's like <laughs> one the time frame. Yep. Like for right now, for what she's doing and what she's able to bring in at this point, she'd still be in school mm-hmm. and going in debt. She'd still be in school, mm-hmm. and it's like you know she's happy. She's had offers, mm-hmm. MTV, Complex. I mean, you name it. That's a, that's a perfect name, example. It's a perfect example. So, like, I've built something. Mm-hmm. And even now to where she is, still super simple. Super simple. One camera, one angle. She might pop in a little graphic and a sound effect here and there. <laughs> I, yo, th- this is it. <laughs> and, 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 and I'll give you an even, an even doper example, which is why... Um, you know, I'm really excited to kind of expand from beyond music and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, also incorporate media and film and uh, graphic and things like that. Is there's a young man who uh, his senior year in high school, he did this doodle, right? Okay. Put it on the Internet and it went viral. It's the, I don't know if you've seen it, I think it's called Black Ralph or Black Ross, something like that. Mm-mm. With the black, with the kid looking out the window. Okay. And I'm sure you've seen various, various versions of it. Like they'll put a football helmet on it. They'll put braids on it. I'll show you when we're done okay. so you can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but long story short, this kid did that and was able to generate traction. Like he's a, just a kid in high school. You know what I mean? And he does, I think his Instagram is Fix My Soul. So he was painting on sneakers and he was kind of doing that thing, doing his creative mm-hmm. thing. Um, and he actually went to fan you. Shout out to fan Nice. Fan you, know <laughs> I mean? uh, you know, um, so I ha- you know, had a conversation with him and the reality of it was is this kid went to college for a year and because of that sketch that he did, he got offered uh, an internship uh, to work on the Dr. Seuss Netflix series. That's incredible. Just from doing a sketch. That's incredible, dude. And Just that's... from doing a sketch that created visibility. And it's like, you know what? I'm not going to sit up here and say, oh, well, the formula is everybody, the last 30 minutes of class, take out your notepad and start sketching stuff and figure out if we can hit a lick. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that's the process. But you have to be open to possibilities where it's like, yo, if you see something, how do you build upon that? Yeah. You know what I mean? How do you support that? You know, I, artists that are coming in here from the producers to the engineers to the rappers, the singers, the musicians, you name it. It's like, well, where was that? Where was the space for you when you were growing and developing to, you know, harness that? Yep. You know, you have your music schools and things like that for those who can afford Right. And those who are exposed to those sort of past. But it's like, you know, you got this kid who always like taking pictures. And now with these phones, it's like it's even more opportunity there. Like, how do you harness that? You know what I mean? How do you harness that and build that? Like, how do you connect this kid to show him that you can take that picture connected with the brand and possibly get a check? You know what I mean? Like, that's that's the the, that when I say non-traditional, that's the type of thing that I'm thinking about. Mm -hmm. Because we constantly hear this thing about jobs and and revenue and cash and you know what what type of circumstances are created due to lack of income Mm -hmm. and then we know the barriers that we face when it comes to this yep right with a lot of these spaces that we're talking about we don't have those barriers exactly you're not limited by time you're not limited by field you're not limited by background you're not limited by education and even the budgetary restraints have become, they're still there, but they're so much lower than they were. Oh, man. Years and, and, and low key right now, COVID has kind of really put everybody in the game because you got movies getting pushed back. Bro. You got 
you know, your your top celebrities and top networks are streaming. They for the, for the first couple months they were doing cell phone. Mm. You know what I mean? They mm. adjusted. You know what I mean? They adjusted, and now it seems like you know some of them have the camera and they got the streaming technology. But for a period there, they were using the same thing as everybody else. It was like wide open, and it's still there. Not only is it it's still, still there, there. but I'm, it's, <laughs> this is why I like talking to you uh, because I'm I, like I said already, like I'm able to kind of bounce my thought process off of you. But like, dude, I go onto Instagram, and nine times out of ten, the biggest celebrities have pages that are no more interesting than other people that I follow who are nowhere near as big. And that's what, to your point, like all of a sudden the playing field's level, and I'm like, hmm, that person really isn't that interesting. They're really not that funny, Don't, so on and so forth. And this other person who I know is just like, I actually literally enjoy their page more. And it's just, and that is kind of my, in, it's, it's an internal frustration for sure. I'm like, how come, you know, I know what my shortfalls are in some places, but like, it's I within myself, within the city, with here. It's like yo, all I, I just see the potential, and I'm like yo, what does it take for us to get to where I feel we belong? Because I really, and I've said this over and over on this podcast, is um, I just I still have a vision in my crazy brain that Wilmington should be a cultural hub. You know, we're right in the middle of everything, and it, it, the possibility is there, and I'm just trying to figure out how we collectively get there. Like, it's great that Sukihana pops. I love that. I would never, like, I, I want that to happen. But, but she like, did that off her own mm -hmm. muscle. Sure, and I love yeah. that. Yeah. So when we talk about, you know, support and infrastructure, hell, those programming things would be one start, because now you're talking about actually putting resources into play. Mm -hmm. Um It, 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 it is a hub. It is a hub. Um, but it's like we have we have a lot of talent without the process. Mm -hmm. um, sheesh. Like, okay, for you personally, um, what are, what is sort of your long-term vision? You know, like where do you want this whole thing to go? And like how are you, how are you, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Like, where, where are we, where's RIMG going? Where do you want it to go? Mm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, that's a big, that's a big question because, um, you know, ultimately, I, uh, I guess RIMG, um, game behind the game, everything, um, that's encompassing this building, uh, will be, the end game will be judged on our product. Okay. Right, so. I mean, um, you have your hands in a lot of different pieces, so. So how many artists are able to uh, create additional streams of income, you know, to whether it be to support a job or to go full time? Mm -hmm. um, you know, how many young people do we connect to opportunities I mean, that are, I mean, it's so low hanging fruit. Some of them are almost closer at it than us. Mm -hmm. They just need to be like, like, twitch them this way. Mm -hmm. He's on to something. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Just, just, just twitch them that way. Yep. Right. So, um, you know, ultimately, you know, and, it's, and, and I don't know, I don't know what, what I should or shouldn't say, but there's a company out here who um, is just infamously known for, uh, growing and developing entertainment talent. Okay. Um, and they've recently gotten to the sports space. Uh, one of my guys that I look at and kind of um, look up to is, you know, as a part of this part of this company, you know, some of the business moves that he makes. Mm -hmm. So um, Endgame is having a, a successful space and infrastructure to create and develop careers in art, sports, and entertainment. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I walk in, you know, there's a, there's a studio. I've, I've, I've made, you know, a couple of pieces of music that I was totally happy with. I love that, I still to this, that, but whenever, you know, hopefully it'll be, you know, decades and decades from now, whenever I pass, Freebird will be one of my favorite things that I've done, period. 
for a lot of different reasons. Um, and it was done here, you know what I mean? And I, I, it's just you walk in and you see the potential. So like in my head, and you know, by no means am I trying to force my vision on you, but it's like, you know, maybe you would relocate, but maybe you, you buy up this whole acreage here and, and, and tear down some of these buildings and you have like, Number one there is like a state-of-the-art studio with all the fucking bells and damn it, all the bells and whistles. And this becomes like a, a, a giant training center, you know what I mean? Like and, and and then you have a film studio across the street. Like So is this that is, so so this here, so so since we'll take it down that path, this was a model. You know, of, of course I've had that vision and I'll even go okay. as far as to say that I've talked with the landlord because when I came back here initially and got this space, I'm like, man. You know, this is what this could be. Um, right. But what I notice here is like, you got to show people first. Like, it's like you got this combination of if you build it, they will come. But you also have to give them the first few steps. Mm -hmm. So exactly what you said um, is, is, is where that's that's the end game. Um, because, you know, once we're operating at a capacity to where we have too many artists, you know, right. now we have we need rehearsal space and now we need performance space. And now we not, you know, we're having to shrink our gym capacity. Mm -hmm. But this this concept model and the impact that it can have um, is is something that I'm trying to prove. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's, it's you you take these things and the impact that they can have for the community, the the opportunities that you can offer. I mean, we've even not only on you know you working on your music, but you've even brought me some young people. Yes. You know what I mean? And and, and we work with other programs who've brought young people by, and it's like, well. You know where do you start it's like well sh you open the door and they're like yo they see the basketball they start dribbling then they go mess with the weights and it's like you know did they get a solid thing in? oh no but now they're upstairs you yeah. know and they're in the studio crate and it's just like man you know somebody in this group either has it or can be developed to go somewhere in one of these spaces i've never had a situation where it's like you know you can't pull a diamond out of here or you can't turn this whole that situation up, you know that's what I mean? Exactly. Um, so that's what I ultimately would like to do, man. I, you know, we could only do so much in this space. So the goal is to expand. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, that takes money. <laughs> and, and, and so, do you think that that is kind of your limiting factor right now? Are there other big pieces to the puzzle that you know still need to get filled in? Like, what do you feel you need to get to where you should be? You know what I mean? Well, I think should be should be is relative. You know, okay. what, what do I think that needs to happen? Uh, you know, should be for me would be when the impact is there. Okay. You know, um, you know when we have artists who are starting businesses. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? When we have, uh, you know, we're corporate capital, but we don't have any jingles. What None. Do you mean? Like so, we got so many businesses that are funded through Delaware. Sure. So many buzz not not funded, but incorporated through Delaware. We have so many local businesses here in Delaware, yeah. but how many local businesses have you heard partner with local artists to create something that identifies their brand? Yes. And, and, and better yet, how many local businesses do you even have that have something that identifies their brand mm -hmm. the way how you have like Pizza Pizza with Mr. Little Caesars or anything like that? Yes. You know okay. I mean? Okay. Or McDonald's gotcha. jingle. Like you don't have nothing like that. You we mean just, when you said jingles, you meant literally? Yeah. Literally jingles. That's the that's a collaboration. Dude, you know what's funny? You know what's funny? Um, coincidentally, like I can't spill all the beans on camera. I'll talk to you about it later. But like I'll say this: um, me and Naj, Naj and Nicole. Mm -hmm. um, I'll say this. I just created a jingle for something we're about to do. Uh, I, I created it uh, maybe what earlier in the week and we're both like yes this is exactly it so it's just funny um that jingle is coming up over this past week but you I, I i totally you're right so let me ask you this question um on the total flip side of things so you know we've been talking worldwide but like and you've talked about this too like on one hand you know we wanted to expand as, as, as much as possible but on the other hand it seems to me that just based on numbers, in as much as you want to leave Delaware, that there might be enough in Delaware for you to function just as a local artist and eat well. Don't do you think that that place is? How do you see that? You know what I mean. So this is this is uh, this is some math that I like to use when I'm working with artists. Mm -hmm. um, Five thousand mm -hmm. 
and 1,000 as a fan point, mm -hmm. right? Because most artists think about, oh, well, I want to be famous. I want to be touring. They're not thinking about 1,000 or 5,000 people, mm -hmm. right? They're like, man, millions, you know, hundreds of thousands of people. I want the world to know my music. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we shrink that perspective into one to 5,000 people. Um, we're probably close to a million people in Delaware, definitely 900,000, over 900,000 people in Delaware. Mm -hmm. And I tell you that you need 5,000 or 1,000 of them to spend $100 a year with you. Um, it could be shows, it could mm -hmm. be merchandise. If you have, if you have nice merchandise, you could sell a, a shirt, a hat, two shows, and an album, and there's a hundred dollars. Yep. You sell that to five thousand people, and that's a, that's half a million dollars. All of a sudden. It's, so, do I believe it's there? I do. I mean, it it is. <laughs> Those people are there, and I think that that like, gets it's. it's that, that spectrum that you have to work in and because and I've really been starting to um, think about that more because on one hand it's like you know I've, I'm not trying to toot my own damn horn but it's like I've, I've done Firefly I've done you know Clifford Brown with Jonathan I've done a lot of these there's not too much more that I can I mean I'll do things over and over again it's fine but it's like on one hand, I've done these things, so I want to break out and really start to create a buzz outside of here and like work Baltimore and work Philly and work New York and really get that out there. And but on the other hand, if I just focus here and really try to, I don't know what the word is, curate or whatever, it's not curate, but it really develop my fan base even more here and, and, and just know, like you said, if I can get a thousand people to buy my t-shirts and spend this much money, all of a sudden, you know, and then you gotta do it every year, but it's it's something that I don't think anywhere near. You gotta do people. it every year, but here, now here's the reality, right? With these people that we're talking about, how many of them are making fifty grand right now? Nobody. <laughs> Even at their job. <laughs> no, 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 nobody. I got you. So, I'm so, so you do that in one year. Now you got technically, if you can live off fifty. You got 10 years to play with. And I'm not saying that that should be your focus. But I've, I've literally seen a guy take a mixtape, sell $40,000 worth, mm -hmm. go bought a car, and put down on a crib. Mm -hmm. And only did one project. Mm -hmm. That was it. Yep. I've seen it. Yep. It's just Watched it with focus. my own eyes. Mm -hmm. Right? And... That's what shows you that it can be done. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Now, what is that going to take? I mean, you got some environmental things that are playing into, um, you know, what that revenue looks like, like streaming. Um, obviously, COVID, you know, the lack of performances and opportunities like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's forcing people to get creative around what that $100 looks like. But even even as you're talking about with COVID, like, in, um, so... With the Rona Palooza thing, like when the first round of that, um, you know, a couple of people made a few bucks, but then round two came, which I wasn't involved with in terms of performing. Round two came, and I was like, okay, this is where we messed up, and I was really like, yo, y'all gotta really plug your cash apps, and dude, it was so cool. Like this didn't hit my pocket, but I was like, yo, y'all gotta hit up the cash app. A two, at least two artists did a half hour worth of music and made like three, four hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? When normally you can't make that, you know, doing three hours at a local bar. So it's like, huh. Now getting people to do that again is, is difficult to put, you know, every time, but it's like, it's like, mm. Until it's the norm. Yeah. Until it's the norm or it's a situation where people are putting a dollar, two dollars and it's just kind of like, you know, you know what I mean? and I don't know how you keep 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 it interesting every time, but I'm like, this is something that y'all could run with if you wanted to, because that comes back to where I think the artists have to understand the weight that they have to carry, mm -hmm. right? Like, and this is, you know, sometimes I clash with artists when it comes to this, but it's like, um, everybody wants to get paid, sure, but. I mean, the reality of the situation is, you know, especially when you're looking at like venues, mm. right? If I'm a venue 
and I'm going to bring an artist to perform. What do you think is a primary reason that I'm bringing that artist to perform? Well, cool. So that we can make money. And can you put those butts in the seats? Can you put the butts in the seats? And that's where it gets... Go ahead, before I... Yeah. Because that's what it comes down to, is can you put the butts in the seats? Mm-hmm. Do you know how to make that happen? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And we kind of put the cart before the horse a lot mm-hmm. just because of how hard it is. It is hard. It, it, it is hard. It, it is hard. And you understand that a lot of time, a lot of money, and then like someone like yourself, schooling and everything else, training, mm-hmm. everything else to be able to do what you do. Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, we get that. But no one cares. And I'm, like no one cares how long it took McDonald's to evolve their formula. Mm-hmm. Just make it quick and make it good. Right, right. We right. don't care. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. keep that price low. I wonder, um, you know, you hear the complaint a lot, but I do I wish someone could do like a study on it. But I, I, I wonder if, for instance, like, the, I wonder if the uh, Philadelphia you know, population is just more likely to actually go to a show and pay money and sit down than people in Delaware. But it might be exactly the same. It's just a matter, a matter of they just have more people, so it's easier to get people in the seats because there's just a bigger population. You know what I mean? I don't know. We have a weird, we got, we got a weird vibe here in Delaware. You think so? So let's just And say, I'm always thinking about that, you know? Tell me what venue or what event on what night everyone feels welcome? Uh, there isn't that place. There isn't. I mean, there's, there are potentials, but there isn't that place. You know? I get it. Yeah. So then, so then now you say, okay, well, since everybody's not together, then who is my market? Mm-hmm. And where are they? Mm-hmm. Okay, where are they? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? What, what, what will these venues allow? Mm-hmm. What won't they allow? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I remember, specifically here, uh, I don't know, this is two or three summers ago, when like Jaheen was here in abundance, did the whole, you know, like I, I, I walked in and I was like, this is a thing. This is a thing and this is how movements get started. And, you know, you see these little flames, you know, oh, come on, come on, come on, you want to just keep, and I don't, I don't know, I don't, I think that's part of the challenge that we're talking about, you know what I'm saying? Um, I, I don't, that is the core of my frustration, I feel like, you know what I'm saying? That, that vibe that you described and, and how to have these little fires grow, you know what I mean, you know? And how to get those butts in the seats. Because if you look at someone's Facebook or IG and you see so many views and responses and likes and great comments, but like, are you actually going to come out tonight and pay for this ticket and buy something? I don't know. It's hard. And I'm terrible at that. So here's the thing. I think there is, it's a two-part, maybe even more than that, but it's at least a two-part problem because you have the artist's who need to step up, Mm -hmm. like just step up everything. Mm -hmm. Um, Your presentation, your approach, your branding, Mm -hmm. your consistency, Mm -hmm. right? Um, And then we also have to have an investment into uh, the local creative economy so that it doesn't cost artists so much. Right. Right. Like I, um, I'll give you a, a classic example is I have, uh, I have issues with law enforcement when it comes to my spot. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, you know, they're always harassing, always creating issues. Um, and I most, I most recently had, um, an issue where I had a young DJ, um, that was going to do a live stream little event for about 40, 45 kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and the cop came to me and said, well, you know, you can't have anything super big or, you know, any huge events or anything like that. I'm like, it's not a big event. Right. Um, went through this whole thing with him about why I'm trying to pr- provide this space here. 
um, you know, for these individuals because on that night, you have a young DJ who's less than 13 years old. Oh, wow. And then you also have other acts who are between 12 and 15 who are going to be getting paid, mm -hmm. right? Um, and his thing was, you know, there's, there's plenty of, like, venues. There's plenty of halls and theaters that they could rent. Why don't they just go rent those? I'm like, maybe because they don't got $800. I mean, come on, how do you not understand that? Like, like, I mean, I understand he's a cop. Why would he know that? But still, like, but, come on. But at the same time, it's like you felt, you, felt, you felt the need to offer your suggestion around, well, why doesn't he go there? So now that I tell you why, and then I tell you why we're creating this space, so why, how, can we, how yeah. can we come here? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? How can mm -hmm. we come here? Um, and I won't even go into details about how bad that day was, mm -hmm. but it was bad. It was bad, right? I, I'll, I'll just say this. We didn't have the event. We mm -hmm. postponed it the day before. And the day of, we had cops, eight cop cars sitting outside the facility from 5 o'clock to 11 o'clock. Wow. All that time. 5 to 11. There's nothing going on here except... Literally. Me training a few clients, working out, studio sessions upstairs. <coughs> Told them we weren't having the event. But that's, that, that's just kind of the, the energy here. It's like, we're going to show you that you're going to do nothing here. I already, I already said I wasn't going to do it. And so now he said, well, where are these kids going to go now? Because let me tell you, Jay, the crazy thing is, is like for those events and when I partner with that particular person, there's kids walking from north side. Wow. You know where we are. Wow. North side, east side, west side. Walking. That's a stretch. You know why? Yep. Because there's nowhere else. Mm -hmm. And so the thing is, when you're talking about the group, it, 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 it's just crazy, man. It, it's, it's crazy. So now where do they go? Mm -hmm. And then you wonder why you go out any type of night and you see kids nine the whatever outside it's like what do you mean what do you mean with that situation and we don't have to i mean we can be specific as you want but do you feel like that is just blatant racism like like you're or, or is it like because i mean I'm gonna, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna, I don't, you know, racism. I don't know. Like it, it's definitely a lack of cultural competency, um, and we've had that issue before. Like I, and I, and I'll give you an, a classic example of what I mean. And you know, some people will call it racism. I'm just gonna say like you really just don't understand, um, and just aren't doing thorough enough into it to or not looking looking into it thoroughly enough to really understand. So we have a, a, a semi big as far as scale um, rap battle that we were going to do, mm -hmm. right? 15 to 20 people max, including the videographer. How do they even know that you're going to have, the, I mean. Because they're on my social media. Right. So this is what they did. The, the week, the Monday before that event, the lady came to me and says, she, uh, she posted right up front, county cop, says this event can't happen. Why can't it happen? Because these are the type of events that people get shot at, like Chicago nightclubs. All it said was battle the two artists. In either location. way, that doesn't mean you get to stop the event. And it wasn't invite. It wasn't, it wasn't like, oh, public all come. It was something that we were shooting, that we were promoting. And, like, the fear they put in me was like, you know, we'll, you know, we'll shut you down uh -huh. if you do it. And uh -huh. I'm like, well, I can't afford to not be able to do everything else just for that. And then I constantly go through that up and down. And like, oh man, we got something here where we can keep the kids engaged and keep them doing something positive during the COVID times. And then I get a call saying, hey, 
They said they got you this time. And I'm like, what you mean they, they got me how? What do they what do they got me? They said they're going they're going to be out there and they're going so I went through talking to the fire marshal, talking to the county cops, all just trying to say, look, it's just kids. Mm -hmm. And it's not a large group. These mm -hmm. kids are 9 years old. Mm -hmm. These kids are getting dropped off by their parents or they're walking. Like you 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 have to understand the dot. You got to understand who you're dealing with. Right, and I understand what problems they're trying to create, and that's a whole. They're trying. That's a whole other thing. Yep. The problems they're trying to prevent, we don't have. Like we don't have those problems here. I know. You Do know you I mean? think that if this facility was next to the Pal or in South Bridge or somewhere directly in the hood, that you'd have the same uh, pushback from law enforcement? Yeah, I, I do because okay. I think you just don't understand. Mm -hmm. You just don't understand, like mm -hmm. why? Okay, so we're having events for young people. Mm -hmm. Why don't we see the pal? Why don't we see Browns? Why mm -hmm. don't we see these fire halls that mm -hmm. we used to party at? Mm -hmm. Like I knew it was getting bad when there was nowhere for us to go, mm -hmm. and then we had these couple little teen clubs that they tried to create for us. Mm -hmm. Granted, what happened happened, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? What yeah. happened happened, but I, I was there. Like I saw when I left for college. It was slim to nothing that we could go where, whatever. Then when I was coming back, it was like, oh, well, this hall is doing this. This hall is doing that. And then now. I don't want to get into a whole complaint session right now, but it's like, I'll say this on camera. You know, like you said, none of the, there's, n there's no crime happening here. There's none of that happening here. Like if y'all want to prevent crime, go to where the crime is. And I'll leave it at that. Like, y'all, that doesn't happen. It happens on the street at 3 o'clock. Never mind. Anyway, that's frustrating. That's a, very that, frustrating. That's frustrating. Um, because it's like you sit here and you try to figure out well, what's the solution. Exposure, support, consistency. All right. Create a space. Create programs. Create opportunities. Okay. So now we need to do it in numbers. Because if I just got two, three people in here, you're like, okay, well, there's still a bunch of kids. Okay, so we bring them all. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like we have the capability, like legit. There's people that you can have and hire to host events and do things where they'll bring kids in by the hundreds. Yeah. And you pick your night. Right. They're coming by the hundreds. Yeah. You protect the situation. You know what I mean? You want to keep guns out? You put security at the door. It's not rocket science. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know what I mean? It's it's not rocket science. That's 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 it. and we've done, it is what it is. We're dealing with what we're dealing with. You know what I mean? And I did, somebody just told me this the other day. It's like when you think about the climate with what our kids are dealing with right now. Mm -hmm. They said school is the drop. Mm -hmm. Why are you not going to school? Because they know exactly where I'm, where I am. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, and yeah. it's happened. No, it's it definitely happened. It's happened. Yeah, clearly. You know, and, and so it's like, so, so you're dealing with, you, you're just dealing with an unfamiliar climate. You know what I mean? All the way around. And I think, you know, like you said, well, what I still, what we still have those problems, um, if we were in the city or whatever. Yeah, it's because yeah. you don't understand. Yeah. It'd be different if you had people managing those situations who were from it, you know what I mean, who, who, who knew the kids. You know, I think that was something else that, that kind of changed in the community is like, we knew the kids, like it was a 50-50 chance you went to church with somebody who was running the center, who was connected to the program, who, you know what I mean? And, and, and now it's just like, it's this, it's this mix between, you know, college students, and people that you're trying to give hard situations of exposure to so they can, you know, it, it, it. but they don't know, mm -hmm. you know? It, it, and you have these conversations with people and it's like, well, yeah, man, I, you know, after my term here is done, I'm out. But why? Right, why? right, right. No, oh, you know, it's just, it's just a lot. And it's like, well, you know, that's not solving anything. Great they got the exposure. You know, great that they'll, they'll be able to be a report written about, you know, what's going on. But, uh, you know, how do we, what's, what's, what's next? 
Yeah, I, I think to that point that like the idea of sort of long-term investment in your community is really important. And I actually had a, with, with Jahid, we had a really, we had a couple of discussions about the idea that like, you know, so they have like HBCU week and you send all these kids off to college, which is fantastic, and they go to college, but like they're really, um, you also need to sort of immediately kind of put in their head, hey, come on back and help build and, 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 and you know, really invest yourself back in here so we can make this a place that, you know, really becomes the potential that we see. You know what I mean? I think that's a really important thing. And I mean, and that's another thing that I don't want to keep, you know, but like, um, I, I don't know because you can't prove it until it happens, but I wonder how much more successful certain people would be if they just said, all right, I'm leaving Delaware and I'll just do what I do somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I, I, my skill set is what it is. And if y'all gonna make it difficult, then I'll go to Philly, Atlanta, you know, Houston, New York, and we'll get it done there. Now, you know, that talent is not here. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, yeah, and that's, that's, that's basically what's happening. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening. Because it's so, you know, you, you have to give certain people like yourself a lot of credit for being like, nah, I'm gonna, plant my flag here and we're gonna figure it out. You know what I'm saying? I, and you, you gotta have a certain, uh, you, you know, people who do that definitely deserve some credit. Or anyone who is committed to trying to make this place what it should be. I, I you know, that's what I'm doing and what I want. Sorry about that. No, you good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we'll start to wrap it up, but like, um, why did you set up shop here in Delaware? I mean, you could you were in Florida, you know. What what brought you back here? Cuz I felt like I was most familiar with the problem here. Mm, mm -hmm. I was most most familiar with the problem um and most connected to uh resources and networks to actually be able to create a model for change, mm -hmm. right? So it's like, you know, I could go to New York or Philadelphia or Arizona or wherever mm -hmm. and do what I'm doing and probably more than likely it would be successful just as, you know, what we're doing here. But it's just, you know, I'm able to, I'm able to feel the impact, you know, and kind of see it a little bit more. So that was why, I, um, you know, why I decided to start here. And then plus it's, it's underdeveloped. Yeah. Right. And I'm a builder. I'm a visionary. Right. You know, so my whole thing is I can go to Philly, but I already see what's here in Philly. I see what's in Miami. I see what's in Atlanta. I see what's in Chicago. Mm -hmm. But here in Delaware, I see a blank canvas with all the ingredients. That's what I see, dude. That's what I see. And yeah, there's the convenience of having my parents live close by so that if I need, you know, child coverage, I can drop them off. And, you know, grandparents, everyone's close. I love that. That, that's definitely a determining factor in me being here still um, because there are other places for sure that are attractive, but all things added up, you know, I've really, when I, every, every time I say that I see the potential here, I really mean it. Like, it's not just me BSing and trying to generate hype. Like, I could, the reason that I'm not going to name specific artists is because I don't want to leave somebody out accidentally because I'm forgetful, but, you know, we could both give a list of people who have it, who aren't where they should be, and I just want to see that happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I mean, when you look at areas where those things are thriving, I mean, they're supported on every level. Right. Right? You go down to Atlanta, you got film programs, you got music programs, you got studios. So it's like you're, 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 you're growing up in it. Mm -hmm. um, and even even when it looks at like athletics, you know, um, for a long time, we didn't see success on a professional level as frequently as what we're seeing it now. You know, what do you like, mean? Uh, f from, from as far as athletes are from concerned. Delaware, you mean? What? Yes, I have seen that when I think yeah. about it. It's every, crazy, actually. Every, right? Every year. Why is that such a difference? Because there wasn't that when I was in high school. I mean, I'm relatively being old head. It wasn't, you didn't see it. Like, you, you didn't see it. So what's the difference now? You know, I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I mean, it, the bug hit me. Right. I, I, was, I was after it. You know what I mean? A, a, a lot of the homies that I grew up with, I mean, they were after it, like, mm -hmm. you know, in their respective sports. So 
Um, I think we've always been after it. Um, I think what we see is, you know, programs like, you know, Check Rock, who's been supporting that, you know, early levels, you know what I mean? You know, the things that we're doing here, um, you, you're starting to see more opportunities for uh, the needed training uh, to get to the next level being accessible to um, populations who wouldn't normally have access. Sure. Right. So, uh, you know, when I was probably, I would say late 90s through early 2000s, the formula would be the studs that you saw, mm -hmm. they usually had someone that was on their back, mm -hmm. whether it was their dad, mm -hmm. whether it was their community center coach, whether mm -hmm. it was, you know what I mean? It was one person who was like, look, we gonna go. Mm -hmm. And then you would see one here, a couple here that would really, you know, like my dad was real instrumental in my, you know, my, my pursuit in college baseball and going to a professional level and supporting me in that way. Um, and I know a lot of homies who, some of which at one point in time were more talented than me. Of course. But didn't get that, mm -hmm. right? So that was, a, that was a big thing that I wanted to make sure. Um, and that I think that we need to, uh, you know, really focus on, it's like focus on the possibility. And then yeah. what you don't understand, um, leave the people who do, yeah. right? Like you might not understand how to, how do you take uh, having a kid, a kid pursue hoop dreams and turn that into him becoming a businessman or an accountant or whatever the case may be? Because you haven't done it, mm -hmm. you don't understand it, man. Let him, let him try to be Michael Jordan as long as he can. Because guess what? If he does it right, he's going to travel the country. He's going to meet new people. He's going to learn new disciplines. And mm -hmm. he's going to push himself beyond his limits. Yep. You let those things happen, hell. I don't care if he's five foot two. Let him think he's going to the NBA until the NBA tells him no. I dig that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let him think that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's the same thing when it comes to these artists. Like, my homie who just walked in, man. Like, we grew up playing video games and listening to music. Like, that could have been any Saturday for us, you know? Okay. He had all the, all the top playlists, right? Right. And then for the last 10 years, I've watched him be on camera, behind the camera, in entertainment, music, arts, you name it. And now he's working with one of the top video game companies as North America's content creator. I love it. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, you know, you take, you take, you take that. And what, like, where do you build on that? Mm -hmm. Like, like where, where was the pipeline? I ran it, went to college, got exposure, really got out and got his hustle on to get those mm -hmm. experiences. But it's like, where is the pipeline for that kid who loves video games and loves music that he could end up in this space or even know that that space is there for him to pursue? Right. If you don't know, you don't know. Yep, absolutely. You don't know the kid that doodled on a piece of paper and got the internship. Mm -hmm. That's why you don't see the value in this program. Mm -hmm. Right. You haven't seen a guy generate five, six thousand dollars a month off of three songs. Right. That's why you don't believe in making it. Oh, well, what you going to do with a studio program? Make everybody a rapper? No. Mm -hmm. No, we're going to teach them how to take meetings. We're going to teach them how to schedule appointments. We're going to teach them how to create a product, teach them how to market a product, teach them how to brand a product, mm -hmm. teach them how to build a network, mm -hmm. teach them how to solicit investors. All the things that you would do if you're starting a business. And heck, you don't even need all that to get a job. So you're over prepared for the workforce. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. You need to be sitting down with the CEO if you're ready to talk marketing decisions and tell them how they can reach a new, pe new group of New, new target demographic and you coming to the table saying, hey, look, you know, these services are needed in this community, but we never get these. Mm -hmm. You don't even understand the value that you add to this company to say, hey, yeah, you think you, think you could get us over there? We could. Now you've got 200 new clients just because you brought this one guy in. Literally. And he knows that process because he used to be an artist. Mm -hmm. And he understood the hand-to-hand -hand game. Like, I see guys who are successful now, man. He, look, look at Rick Ross, Freeway Rick Ross. Sure. Well, I mean, all the way he's the first. Where he's at now? Yes. Man, you know, they, they talk to him about how it feel to make $3 million a day. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay. So when you're having a conversation with this guy about how he's moving T-shirts and books, making $30,000 a day, managing teams of tens of thousands of people who are now pushing his product like a network marketing system. And you say, well, where did he get that from? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
You know what I mean? These are those transferable skills, man. And, yeah. and it doesn't matter. Like one thing I've noticed, you know, I've gone to college, you know, and I've had legit business conversations with guys who never, they, they might not even finish high school. But True. these guys, when I tell you they are on point, they are on point. They're on point. Like when it comes down to the economics, the supply and demand aspects and those who understand that. Those fundamentals. The fundamental things, mm -hmm. man. And not everybody gets that. Right. But the ones who do, I mean, those are special individuals. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the ones who were supported and or directed or connected when you see guys like your Dane Dashes and your Master P's. Like when you look into the stories of these guys, yeah, they had their hustle. Right, but they also was they were guided. Somebody taught them about making a decision. Mm -hmm. Whether it was Master P talking to Michael Jackson's lawyer, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's like okay, yeah, that's a conversation. Right, but most guys don't even know. Well, that's a conversation I need to have. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Do you think there's maybe like a short shortage of being able to access those kinds of people in Wilmington? You know what I mean? I mean, there's certainly ballers here, but they're not. You know. It might not be Michael Jackson's lawyer, but there are successful people here for sure. Well, do you, it, people don't know what you need them to do. Right. 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 If you don't understand what you need, you don't even know what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. I, he had a specific question. Mm -hmm. And it was worth $10,000 for less than an hour. Yeah. 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 <laughs> are you referencing that drink champs conversation with Master P? I don't know. I don't know if it's a drink chant. I think he has talked about. No, they talked about it on there. But he he never he kept that funky. Mm -hmm. You know, they even talked about it on the. Uh, I forget what the name of the series that just came out on BET, but they featured No Limit and some of the other. Um, that kind of gave you a behind the scenes and the upbringing of the label. Just kind of give you the juice, man. When I watch that stuff, I'm inspired. And yeah, that's kind of how I see you. Yeah. That's that's like I. I like, in as much as you're not an artist, like, I see you being that kind of guy here. Yeah. That's, that's exactly my point. Like, I want to look up 20 years from now and, like, someone like you has that um, reputation. You know what I mean? That's the goal. The impact is, 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 is first and foremost for me. You know what I mean? Like, if you look at P and the careers he's created, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? You look at, I mean, even now, well, they just came out with cereal. Yeah, and the snacks. The, they the, got the, the rap snacks. The rap snacks. They got stuff rap like snacks. that. They got noodles. And now they got I know cereal. they have noodles. That's hilarious. Yeah, they but got that makes perfect noodles. sense. Right. Because, you know, I'm very much a traditional artist. So if you, I'm not going to, I'm spending all my time thinking about my craft. You know what I'm saying? So I need someone, number one, like you, who would be out there hustling for like if I you like someone like you like perfectly perfect example like with, with my podcast like I need somebody to be out there like yo he has this many views and you have this product if you advertise it you know this is how much it costs I'm not gonna do that not because I can't but because it's like I'm not thinking about those kinds of things I would never think about noodles but you'd be like no noodles da -da -da -da, put it together boom everybody's paid you're making money for your noodles because people are watching it it's advertising I got my cut and he got his part for the podcast you know what I'm saying those are the pieces, and I know that you're that kind of character who will see the bigger picture while I'm thinking about what chord to use for a song. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I mean, that's that's what it comes down to, man. No matter whether you're an artist or, I mean, obviously athletes are, are, are a little bit different, but even for businesses, it's, it comes down to market share. Yep. You know what I mean? And access to people. Once you have access to people, then you start to look at your level of engagement with those people. Yep. Now, once you're able to scale both of those, I mean, the sky is the limit. That's where it is. The sky is the limit. That's how you align your brain. What is, what is Travis Scott? He just got something else that's another thing that's like, what? Does he have a, a, a meal at McDonald's? Like a Travis Scott I meal? I have no idea, but that'd be hilarious. It's crazy. Like, it makes I think sense. he does. It, it's something like that. I think, you know, he did the whole thing with, like, just changing the game. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, look, I got millions of these people right here in this mm -hmm. demographic mm -hmm. who are marching to my beat. Yeah. If you want to march with them, I can help you do it. Yeah. And everyone will make money. Everyone's going to make money. Yeah. And I think if we look and we trained and really developed artists from the rappers to the painters to align in that way. And yo, shout out to some of our dope painters. Bruh. Like, Bruh. like Aleem, Terrence, I love Aleem. Michael. I mean, these like, guys are he, killing it. Aleem, I don't know if you're watching this at all, but you really like, 
he his posts on Facebook like it's like but he's just his brain works differently but I really love his work and I don't have a good eye for visual stuff I just know if it grabs me it does like I can't explain it but he yeah I, I, I love what he does and he's such a character and he's one of those guys to me it's like yo he, he he's got that thing and I, I would love to see him you know I don't want him to be another artist who passes away and 20 years later, he's discovered and all of his paintings are worth millions of dollars then. Like, kick rocks. Like, pay that man now. So, uh, I think you know, he's on that trajectory. I, I do, he's, too. I do, he, too. He, he's made some moves, man. I do, he, too. He's made some moves, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and he comes from a good place with it, so I don't see him really running out. Yeah, I agree. And I think that you're going to be... Uh, I'm hoping that you are in that conversation, dude. That's why I wanted to make sure I, 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 I did this with you. So. Thanks for the time, it. dude. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> cool. I appreciate it. That's it. I'm going to stop it. Yeah.